Hi students, in the previous videos we learnt about the classification and applications as well as the purpose of embedded systems. In the today's video we will be learning about the typical embedded system that is what are all the components which are present in an embedded system. We know that embedded system is a combination of both software and hardware to do a specific task or group of tasks within the given time. Let me quote an example. A watch is a time displaying system. Its components follow a set of rules to show the time. If one of its part fails, the watch will stop working. So we can say in a system, all its subcomponents depend on each other. The typical embedded system that is contains a system core that is a single chip controller which acts as a master brain of the system along with the other components as well. The controller can be microprocessor, microcontroller, FPGA, DSP, ASIC that is application specific integrated circuit or application specific standard product. The next component is the IO ports that is input ports. Keyboards, push button switches, etc. are examples for common user interface input devices. And whereas the output ports, the LEDs, liquid crystal displays, piezoelectric buzzers, etc. are examples for common user interface output devices for a typical embedded system. The next element or the component is the memory. For holding the control algorithm and other important configuration details, Memory of the system is responsible. The memory for most of the embedded systems are fixed type, which is kind of read-only memory, that is ROM, and it cannot be modified by the user and hence protected from the unwanted user through the memory protection mechanism. The most common types of memories are OTP, PROM, UVEP-ROM, EEP-ROM, and Flash. Sometimes, system requires the temporary memory for performing arithmetic operations or control algorithm execution. Random access memory, that is RAM, is used in most of the systems. Various types of RAM are like SRAM, DRAM and NVRAM. Next important element is a communication interface. This is very important for uh, communicating with various subsystems of the embedded system with the external world. The communication interfaces may be used to achieve onboard like I2C, SPI, UART, parallel bus interfaces, etc. or external communication that is wireless interfaces like infrared, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. The last is other supporting integrated circuits and the subsystems. So these are the elements of the typical embedded system. Next, moving on, to the, moving on to the core of the embedded systems. Embedded systems are domain and application specific and are built around a central core. The core of the embedded system falls into any one of the following categories. General purpose and domain specific processors. So under that we have microprocessor, microcontroller and digital signal processors. The second one is application specific integrated circuits. The third one, programmable logic devices. Fourth one, commercial off the shelf components. So let us see one by one the core unit. Firstly, under the general purpose and domain specific processors, we have microprocessor. A microprocessor is a silicon chip representing a central processing unit that is CPU which is capable of performing arithmetic as well as logical operations according to a predefined set of instructions. In today's scenario, almost 80% of the embedded systems are processor or controller based. The processor may be a microprocessor or a microcontroller or a digital signal processor depending upon the domain in the application. Most of the embedded systems in the industrial control and the monitoring applications make use of commonly available microprocessor or microcontrollers, whereas domains which require signal processing such as speech coding, speech recognition, etc. make use of a special kind of digital signal processors. 
So now let us see some, one of some of the differences between a general purpose processor and also uh, along with the application specific instruction set processor. A general purpose processor or GPP is a processor designed for general computational tasks. The processor running inside your computer or a desktop is a typical example for this GPP. Application specific instruction set processors are the processor with architecture and instruction set optimized to a specific domain or application requirements like network processing, automotive, telecom media applications, digital signal processing, control applications, etc. So most of the Emirates systems are built around application specific instruction set processors. Some microcontrollers, system on chips, digital signal processors, etc. are examples for the application specific instruction set processor. The next one is a microcontroller. A microcontroller is a highly integrated chip that contains a CPU, RAM, special and general purpose register arrays, on-chip ROM or flash memory for program storage, timer and interrupt control units, and dedicated I.O. ports. Microcontrollers can be considered as a super set of microprocessors. Since a microcontroller contains all the necessary functional blocks for the independent working, they form greater place in the embedded domain in place of microprocessor. They are cheap, cost effective, and are readily available in the market. The next unit is a digital signal processors. So digital signal processors are powerful special purpose 8 or 16 or 32 bit microprocessors designed specifically to meet the computational demands and power constraints of today's embedded audio, video and communication applications. Digital signal processors are two to three times faster than the general purpose uh, microprocessors in signal processing applications. DSPs implement algorithms in hardware which speeds up the execution whereas general purpose processor implement the algorithm in firmware and the speed of the execution depends primarily on the clock for the processors. In general, DSP can be viewed as a microchip designed for performing high speed computational operations for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. A typical digital signal processor incorporates the following key units. Program memory. Memory for storing the program required by DSP to process the data. Data memory. Working memory for storing temporary variables, data or signal to be processed. Computational engine. Performs the signal processing in accordance with the stored program memory. IO unit. Acts as an interface between the outside world and DSP. So these are the key units in a typical digital signal processor. The next concept is here is a CISP and the RISC. So different instruction set and system architectures are available for the design of a microprocessor or a microcontroller. RISC and CISC are the common two instruction set architecture available for the processor design. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. So all RISC processor or the controllers process lesser number of instructions typically in the range of 30 to 40. For example, Atmel AVR microcontroller has 32 instructions. CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing. The instruction set is complex and the instructions are high in, high in number. For example, H051 microcontroller, its instruction set contains 255 instructions. Next is the Von Neumann and Harvard architecture. Harvard and Von Neumann architectures are the two common system architectures for processor design. Processor based on Harvard architecture contains separate buses for program memory and data memory. Whereas processor based on the Von Neumann architectures shares a single system bus for the program and data memory.